legs off the table. All done for today. Thank you very much. Well, God damn, <laughs> I'm feeling like a new man. If you ever find yourself in San Miguel and you need a chiropractor, Salud de Manos is the spot. Doug and his family are so, so, so nice. They're so nice. Look at, they gave Kaylee this handmade necklace. So welcome back to Don't Stop Belize. <laughs> we have an awesome day planned. So many activities. Let's go. Today's video is basically gonna be about all the things that we've learned about Mexico so far and what the things we've learned about traveling to Mexico and what it entails. And we have the perfect way to start out this video. So you guys will watch this a little bit later, but today for us, today is Valentine's Day. Yes. So Kaylee guilt tripped me into coming to Panio, <laughs> our favorite bakery. Which we've been here, this is probably like our seventh time here in the last At four least. years. <laughs> so today, first thing that we've learned during our travels to Mexico is do not be on a diet. So that, it's a little bit of a joke, but it's kind of serious at the same time because the food here is amazing, but you're also gonna have a really hard time staying on any diet. When I came to Mexico, when we first crossed the border, I was trying to eat keto, and it lasted for about a day because the food here, you gotta try everything. Yeah, there's so many like tacos and tortillas and pastries and meats and all these different concoctions of so many dishes, dishes. and there's so many that we've even tried yet. Yeah, but we've loved everything that we've had Tamales, so far. So our first. Bajaquinos. <laughs> <laughs> so our first recommendation is Do not be on a diet if you're coming to Mexico and you want to truly engage in Mexican food. So the next thing that we've learned is really the only type of water you want to avoid in Mexico is the tap water. And it's not because it's super dirty or anything like that. It's just the bacteria that's in the water here naturally is different than the bacteria that's in the water in the United States or in Europe or wherever you're coming from. So when you drink the water, it can upset your stomach a little bit. There's a decent chance that you're gonna get an upset stomach at some point during your time in Mexico just because of the difference in the bacteria of the water and you're gonna experience it when you have vegetables or in a lot of the drinks that you have. But it's common belief here that you can't have any ice, which really isn't true. Basically every restaurant uses filtered water for their ice. There's so many dishes you're gonna miss out on if you avoid all greens, all uncooked greens or lettuce or salad. There's so much you're gonna miss out on. And we've been eating it this whole time and none of us have really gotten all that sick. From our experience, Mexico is not as dangerous as a lot of you guys may think. So before coming to Mexico, we really did a lot of research on where to go and where to stay away from. And honestly, we can say there has never been a moment where we felt unsafe. Obviously, there are bad areas of Mexico, like anywhere you go. There's bad areas in the United States, there's bad areas in Europe. But as long as you're smart and you're safe and you're mindful of where you are, then you're gonna give yourself the best possible chance to be safe. So something that we learned that's really important in Mexico is when you're talking with people, whether it's in a restaurant or basically anybody, yeah. if you start by speaking Spanish, even with just a little bit that you know, yeah. if you just try to speak Spanish, they will respect you so much more and they'll be so dedicated to trying to help you out and work with you. And a lot of times they'll speak a little bit of the English that they know and with their little bit of English, and you're a little bit of Spanish. You usually make it work. You usually figure it out. Three hundred and fifty, so that's like fifteen dollars. That's not bad for two Fantas, two bottles of water, and basically like six entrees yeah. in total. We got way too much food. Way too much food. But that's the thing about Mexico, is everything is so, so cheap. The only thing that is a little bit more on the expensive side is gas. For gas, you're gonna spend about $3.50 a gallon. I would compare it to the same prices as California. Sometimes you'll get it $3, sometimes you'll get it up to $4. But then food specifically is so cheap. You can get it for at least 
a quarter of the price yeah. of the food that you get in the United States, sometimes even less. If you go to markets like we're at now, it's super cheap. Yeah, so they're called, they call them fruiterias. So if we go to like a very mainstream supermarket like a Soriana, it's very, I would say maybe like half the price of prices in it's the It's still really, really cheap. It's still cheap, but it's probably not, definitely not even close to how cheap it is at these little markets and little fruiterias. to our yoga it feels so damn good there's definitely more where that came from i haven't been sticking with it i know you haven't but it's all right once i'm a little bit more mobile i'll get maybe out once trent agrees <laughs> 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 some, some allergies today <laughs> so anyway getting back to the things that, that we learned about mexico so far uh, the next one that i would say is mexico in inland mexico is not just deserts and cactuses and just like boring. The stereotypical Mexico. Right. We were honestly so pleasantly surprised to see that there were huge freaking mountains and like pine trees and waterfalls and all of these crazy views that you would never imagine to be in inland Mexico. Jungles and caves yes. and so much. So much. And there's so much more than just the resorts that you right, think of like beaches. Cancun and Acapulco and all these places where people go on vacation is so much more than just beach in Mexico. So anyway, it's time to go make some dinner. So for dinner tonight, we got a little chicken, pineapple, cheese, and raw onion tacos, yeah. baby. Peppers. And peppers. Kaylee whipped up a little dinner for us. I'm super pumped. And now this brings us to our next learning of one month of traveling through Mexico. And that is that the police here, the police that we've talked to, which has been, it was last week, we have to say we've talked to a lot of police officers, huh? We've talked to them More than lot. ever in van life total before. Yeah. 100%. Probably like 20, total 15 is well. to 20 no. officers. Oh, officers yeah. total, yeah, yeah, definitely. Good amount of officers. And I would say, of every single one that we've met, they've all been super nice, super kind. And very the only thing, very respectful, the only thing that they've wanted is to check on our safety and make sure that we we're safe, safe and that we felt safe that everything was okay and that was it and they approached us really nicely really respectfully the fact that we spoke spanish with them also Ooh. definitely helped I'm what <laughs> what nice fucking toenail dude eating an onion on your fucking pants dude this is a feather oh god i thought it was a toenail too okay oh, this, is, this is a feather much better sorry to interrupt you i thought you it was scene. a toenail dude. why do you think i was just picking my toenails of while course because you always do it Hold on, I, I used to i used to do that and then i got a toenail cutter and things have changed <laughs> you're right you're right i bought a toenail cutter in my i know you've been you've been doing really and well so we're just headed to our camp spot for the night here in san miguel so one thing that we have learned while traveling through mexico is the roads are absolute shiz. So pretty much everywhere you go, no matter where, there's these. There's these, which are called topes. And they're basically just massive bumps in the road, speed bumps in the road, um, that can completely mess up your day. And a lot of times, they don't even have signs for them and they're not even marked. So you could be going like 40 miles an hour and all of a sudden a tope just appears in the middle of the road and you're pretty much doomed at that point. Um, other than that, there's just a lot of potholes everywhere and a lot of just like weird dips in the road. It is only verified the facts, very much so, that the roads are not so hot. Well guys, it's time for us to go to bed. We got one last thing that we've learned that we're gonna leave you with. Oaxaquinos. <laughs> no. <laughs> Through this- Oaxaquinos. Kaylee. Okay, I'm sorry, I was trying to be funny. Through this whole process of trying to get our bikes registered, we've learned so much about the laws of Mexico. Mm. And our big learning was that the laws and how they work here are very, very different yes. than to the United States. 100%. When we first started this process to get our motorcycles registered, everyone on YouTube, we had hundreds of comments telling us that we're gonna end up in jail. Pretty much. And that what we were doing was illegal. Mm -hmm. And in reality, everything that we did was totally legal. 
according to the laws in this the um, state that we're currently in in Mexico. Yeah, and we had a professional who does this professionally helping us, and it was totally fine. Now in the United States, what we did totally wouldn't be legal. But the thing to remember that we need to remember is that the laws of Mexico are different than the laws of the United States. And sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around that. Right. Because in some ways, some of them are like vastly different. So tomorrow should be the day, we hope, that we finally get the license plates for our motorcycle. Yes. We just want to take a minute to give a huge thank you to Sonia, mm. the person who's been helping us with this whole process. Absolutely. She's been amazing. Yes. If any of you guys need any help with either traveling to Mexico or you think of moving to Mexico, We'll put Sony's information in the description. Yeah. But that's all we have for today. That's all we got, guys. We're gonna go to bed. We go to sleep. Are exhausted. I'm so like food coma right now. Yeah, we're gonna shut our eyes and pass yeah. out. Yeah. And we'll be seeing you guys next time. We'll see you guys very soon. Peace out. Peace out. Don't stop believing. Took the midnight train going.